All right, let's talk about installing Git. Now I have an overview for the installation process for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now I do have individual install videos that go into much greater detail. So this will just be the highlights to go over what's really different from the standard process. So the process would be that we're going to install Git. Now it's going to be Git for Windows on, of course, Windows systems. On Mac, I prefer using the command line developer tools, which is provided by Apple. And on Linux, pretty much just use your package manager. The installation process is almost identical across the board. The only difference is which package manager command you use. After the installation process, I'll go over our minimal configuration that's required. And there's two more settings as well. And of course, if you want to see more detail, I have a video per operating system. So you can choose the video that's most appropriate for your system. It is fairly comprehensive. So you might think of it as a fairly long video for just covering an installation process. But I like being very thorough and it doesn't leave anything out. And it is step by step. And for those that prefer to work with a set of instructions, I do have installation notes available on my website as well. And there are some people that just prefer, just give me a sheet with the instructions, I'll just do it. That way they can just knock it out in their time frame that they prefer, as opposed to watching a video. Different strokes for different folks. All right, let's look at doing this on Windows. I'll be using Git for Windows, which is the official installer for Git from the official website. That's available from git-sem.com. You're just going to download for Windows. It should be available directly from the home page. It should detect that you're on Windows and provide you the correct download. Now, when you run the installer, most of the defaults should be fine. However, I do like adding the icon to the desktop, setting up Nano as my default editor, and when you get to the lined endings page, I like to choose the middle option, which is check out as is and commit Unix style. That's because most of the teams I've worked with are now cross-platform. On Mac OS, I like using the version of Git that comes with Apple's command line developer tools. The only disadvantage I see here really is that the version that comes with the command line developer tools tends to be slightly behind. However, it is pretty easy and it doesn't cause any conflict. So that's one of the reasons why I recommend this approach. However, there is a small little tweak to this, and that is after major OS updates, you'll need to reinstall the command line developer tools. Now, I'm not talking about little patches where you go from 10.11.6 to 10.11.7. I'm talking about going from 10.11 to 10.12 to 10.13. For the last several years, I've always had the reinstall. And to get started, all you do is type git version. Now, if you already have Xcode installed, more than likely, git will actually already be installed and you should get a version number back. But if it's not installed already, then you'll get a prompt, much like this, where you'll be prompted to install the Apple Developer Tools. Now, you do have two choices here. You can click on the Get Xcode button, and that will route you to the Mac App Store to download the latest, greatest version of Xcode. Of course, if you don't plan on using Xcode, I don't recommend that, because it is multiple gigabytes, and it takes quite a long time to download and install. Instead, if you don't plan on using Xcode, then simply click on Install, which will install only the command line tools. 
as I mentioned before, after you do a major macOS update, you're going to have to reinstall the command line tools. And you do that with Xcode dash select dash dash install. Now you might need to do this as sudo in order to install this correctly. And once you've done that, verify that git still works by typing git version. With git on Linux, the Debian family, you just use apt-git. Again, you'll probably need to use sudo or login as root. It'll be simply apt-git install git. Then you'll need to verify with git version. If you're running Red Hat or CentOS, or a really old version of Fedora, then you can use yum to install git. Again, you may have to do this using sudo or as root. Likewise, also use git version to verify. On Fedora, that is starting at 18, and it was made default in 22 onwards, you can use the newfangled you can use the newfangled DNF command, which is the successor to yum. Like all the other commands, it's basically the same thing. sudo, potentially, or logged in as root, then dnf install git. Basically, all the package managers have the same way of installing git. And, of course, you'll need to verify with git version. Regardless of the operating system you use, you'll need to set up a bare minimum amount of configuration. From your terminal, that is git bash on Windows, or from your terminal program on Mac or Linux, you'll run this series of git config commands. Basically, git config dash dash global, that will save the setting to your user's home directory, then followed by the particular setting we're setting. So our first one is user.name, then in double quotes, your name. The second one will be user.email, then in double quotes, your email address. Now, if you're super sensitive about this type of thing, depending on which hosting service you're planning on using, you can see if they have a privacy-oriented email address you can use. However, most of the time, this does sort of defeat the point of setting up your email address. Those two settings are really the minimal configuration required. I do have two more settings I like to set. Core.editor to nano and push.default to simple. Now, the last setting is really just a way of getting rid of a nag screen that I've seen since Git 1.8, warning that really the default value for doing your pushes is changing. Now, since we're already past 2.0, which is when the change went into effect, we still had the nag screen for a little bit longer. So to make sure we don't get nagged anymore, you said the simple, then Git won't bother to tell you about it. Once you're done with all the configuration settings, you can verify the configuration by doing the git config dash dash global, then dash dash list. That will list out all the settings we've set so far into your terminal program.